Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent Rogue Mage, the new Gwent single-player roguelike game. And we are in the middle of a Savage Fury run here, in which we are getting close to taking on the final boss, the Blue Dragon this time. And as things currently stand, we have a very, very high consistency deck with double magnifying spyglasses. And other than that, we just recently added the Tears of Dragon. We've not really gotten the chance to test this out just yet. In fact, I don't even think we've used this in any run thus far. And we've acquired things like the Great Oak. Drog has been really big for us. Jenga. And other than that, it's our starting deck here. We've removed one of the Panthers as well. So we just have what is more or less a guaranteed way of getting all of our best cards, which has been really nice for us thus far. Let's hop into this event here and see what we end up with. The Forge. I'm not sure if we've seen this before. In the mountains, you stop by a secluded forge owned by a dwarf. Although he's not fond of chit-chat or company in general, he appreciates the occasional business and offers you his services for the right price. Let's see. We can upgrade a unit by two and lose two energy. I mean, we have pretty healthy amount of energy right now and i think we still have a, at least two places of power that we're planning to hit before we make our way over to the boss so why not i suppose and we can select can we select more than one or is it truly just one card and one card alone because let's see obviously would like to upgrade a card that we plan on playing not one of our weaker cards like a panther Tempted to go to Synthesis Blaze because it needs a turn before it can use that order of five damage. And at times, we've had some concern that it could go down before it gets a chance to do that. So I'm leaning that way. Similarly, Sheila at just three power is more vulnerable than Synthesis Blaze is. However, in this case, it's just three damage that we'd be missing out on if she gets immediately destroyed. Whereas it's five damage if it's you that gets destroyed. So, uh, I think we upgrade you. Okay, oh, I see. So you agree on a fair enough price to toss a pouch of coins his way. Uh, you watch with delight as the dwarf works, appreciating the sight of a master in his element. Will that be all, the dwarf asks. So we can continue to upgrade further, but it, the price has gone up. So, it's an interesting question. Uh, at this point, six energy... I mean, we could probably afford one more upgrade, but I think we definitely cut it off there. Let's go for it. Can we upgrade the same card again? We could if we really wanted to. It's probably overkill at that point. I mean, of course, it's it's more points in general, which is just good. It means we're more likely to win, yes. But if the key thing we're looking for here is to power up a unit enough that it is less likely to die before it gets destroyed, then that could be useful. Honestly, come to think of it, Oncrate Greatsword might even be more significant for that purpose than Sheila. Yes, sure, if she gets destroyed, we miss out on three damage, or three points. Whereas if you get destroyed before you get the chance to heal up, then that's missing out on six points. So that's actually more significant. And I kind of like the sound of this. I'll tell you the truth, let's go for that. Okay, we'll definitely cut it off here, though. You agree on a fair enough price and toss a pouch of coins his way. And same idea, will that be all? That is enough, I think, this time. Satisfied with the work, you thank the dwarf and leave him to his solitude. Okay, so the reason why I felt pretty okay, and honestly, perhaps could have gone even further with additional upgrades there, is because we have a place of power right here, which at 55 energy right now, we might actually take this energy here. Initially, we were thinking that we... Might end up taking the other upgrade from this, but didn't know what we were going to get from this event at the time. So I think that was probably better than whatever upgrade from this would be. Well, let's see, is it... Okay, it's a transform a card. Which, I mean, we could transform the one panther we have remaining if it is, even, is an option for us to do. But I don't think this is super valuable for us again, because that's the primary benefit of this, is take your worst card and hopefully turn it into a much better card. But because... We can almost guarantee that we'll never need to play our weakest cards. That's not 
as valuable here. So I think we just gain the energy. And if anything, we have that other place of power that is further along the path here that we may end up... Uh, if we need more energy, we can get it there. Or we could uh, take the upgrade from this one. Do have the elite battle if we choose to go all the way down the southern route. I don't think we will, though. As we said on a few occasions in the previous run, it just feels like the elite battle, at least the first upgrade for Unseen Elder, not that great. But I think we will go to this battle, so we have the option, if we feel so inclined to do that. But I think more likely we'll go events, place of power, battle here. Because we also, initially, getting some upgrades, some better units from the battles was enticing. But at this point, again, because we have super good consistency with all of our magnifying spyglasses and enough good cards that we can play every card in a match and have them all be cards we like. New cards are, are not that helpful for us, but obviously we have at least this battle here. Oh, not this guy. Okay. Alright, you're the one that creates a copy. So if this was really bad when you we were doing Bulwark, Probably not as much of an issue here when we are, uh, when we're going with a damage deck. Because he will create a copy of a card, including whatever boosts it might have. It needs to be a spying card. So, what we would love would be if we could play Unseen Elder first. He's not currently in our hand, but if we could do that, it has Veil, so they can't give him spying. So it just totally bricks him all together. That'd be wonderful, but can't guarantee that. And in fact, our starting hand here is quite good. We have all nice cards. So I'm hesitant to make those changes. I mean, we could dump Ulf Hedden and could get it back with a magnifying spyglass. Oh. If one of our cards has spying and we transform it into a different card with Tears of Dragon. Does that get rid of the spying, in which case that could circumvent their ability there? That's potentially worth considering. But what I was going to say is, we might dump Ulf in and use Magnifying Spyglass to get it back, because we don't need it immediately. More likely than not, it's going to be one of the last cards we want to play. So maybe we get a little bit greedy there. And alas, we, we did, in fact, end up drawing into a weaker card, one of the ones that we would have preferred not to have gotten at all. So that's kind of what we expected to end up happening. Uh, let's lock in some stuff with the Magnifying Spyglass, though. So the first Magnifying Spyglass that we use, this card we select here is going to be the last one that we draw in this match. And then the second Magnifying Spyglass will give us cards one, two, and three that we draw into. So this is card number four. So that is, this is the one where we would consider getting Ulf in or Grigoire is another good finisher. So it's probably going to be end or near the end. Drog and Unseen Elder. We would have been able to get Sheila as well if we had not gotten rid of Ulf Hedin. So that was, again, the risk we took, but I think she's probably... The one that we skip here. I want to be careful with Gregoire. So if we do get the death blow on him, then he becomes a 17, and our opponent can create a copy of him, and that's super valuable for our opponent. So this is perhaps the one that is most susceptible to getting stolen and them getting a ton of points out of it. Everything else is not atrocious. So maybe we go Gregoire at the very end. And these other choices will not matter. Get Sheila. But we won't actually see her. We won't have enough cards to draw to make that happen. This is what matters here. Cards 1, 2, and 3 that we draw into. So it should be Unseen Elder first. Then I'm thinking it's Drog. And then we'll go... Uh, What did we... We did Gregoire last. So we'll go Old Head in here. Okay. So whatever we play first is likely to become the card that they immediately give Spine to and create a copy of. So what are we least concerned about them creating copies of? Possibly the Meliocene Cultist. It is the card that we accidentally drew into because, well, it is probably still the weakest card that we have here. So yes, it is an engine, but it's not like it's going to directly give points to itself. And so when they try to seal it, it's not like they're going to immediately 
get a ton of additional value. And it is also the card, if it does get spying, that we'd be most willing to transform into with Tears of Siren. So... Accept this offering that we might make the coast safely. We might, we won't do this just yet. In fact, we'll probably use the order ability and then transform it. Also, is this the, yeah, I don't even know if this guy has a, a normal version or if he's just only the hard version. So presumably they're gonna give this guy spying immediately. Yes, but that's okay. We deliberately played a bad card. Because they'll create a copy of this. We dare not set sail without her blessing. Okay, so we guaranteed we'd drawn to the Unseen Elder. So we will definitely play this. This has Veil, which means they can't give it Spying, which means they'll not be able to create a copy of it. So that's ideal. So let's play him. That's Thy cellmate tower. Problem is, they have a unit that has Veil. And that's a little bit tricky for us. Because Unseen Elder is going to try to give Bleeding to an enemy unit that does not have Bleeding. He's going to try to give it to the Mage Torture every once in a while, and he's just not going to make anything happen. So we really want the Bleeding to trigger on you. But let us... I guess we'll try to damage you. Then we will transform you, and I want to see if the Spying status stays. It does not. Oh, no. Okay, well, things just got interesting. Okay, then. Apparently, we have Artis. Every unit that gets played is going to get damaged by half its power. Uh, it's a really, really significant card. It's not necessarily one that I wanted us to have, but alas, I mean, we could transform him to something else on uh, a later occasion. But, uh, oh, okay. Um, sure. I guess we're doing that now. Um, I was wondering if, you know, do we maybe thunder on you? and see if we can deal with you because assimilate means you will actually generate points over time and you will continue to thrust frustrate unseen elder so i think given how we do have a fair bit of energy here might as well get rid of the or at least yeah because that's exactly what we want to try to avoid okay fur cart that's another card that will give them additional sources of spying so we want to shut you down we want to get rid of the stuff that can give our card spying. I mean, if you want to create an artist, like, I guess. <laughs> oh, we can. Oh, this timing. We can convert artists into something else, and I think get rid of the spying in the process. And you're on one power. Oh, I love it. I mean, on the other hand, I would also like to immediately destroy you, but maybe we'll settle. We could lock you. Temporarily, that is a an option to shut down this source of spying and okay hold on so on one hand we'd like to transform you so that they don't have anything with spying so that their leader ability they just can't use it on the other hand we'd like to shut down this guy immediately so that they do not have another way to continue to get spying so that they can't do that long term so this shuts you down long term but it does not convert you into something without spying. So it solves the long-term problem. It doesn't solve the short-term problem. We do this, we convert you, solves the short-term problem, doesn't solve the long-term problem. I mean, we could, on our next turn, destroy you with a revenant. Could proceed to thunder you and take you out that way and we wouldn't have the nice one power target for the revenants to go after, but I think we go this route. Okay. So we shut down what was going to be a bit of a nuisance of a card with, uh, with Artis. So now, I mean, Unseen Elder will continue to try to get, I mean, we don't want him to give bleeding to this fur card. It's actually a bit of an anti-synergy here as we theorized in our previous episode, but let us proceed here. Okay, that's fine. That is our ideal target to get the bleeding. Okay, they're just going for the boost. Please don't put it on you, though. Ah, okay, fine. Be that way. And they... Okay. They made a unit have spying so they could use their leader ability that way. Okay. So, fortunately, one of them got destroyed by the rain that they created. 
So now, I mean, we can convert you into something significantly better than a one power unit, so I do like that. Unfortunately, no longer have our nice and simple K20 Revenant target, but we've not yet placed a Synthesis Blaze, and that could certainly help us to set some of those things up. So I think we do that. Or maybe beforehand, we see what we get out of this and then adapt accordingly. Okay, I mean, it's it's more power and it's not a spy, so it's nice, but it's already on the board, so we don't get anything from its deployability. So it doesn't really change much. So let's play you and then maybe next turn we'll go Great Sword and heal you up. But this is a card we want to be, both of these are cards we kind of want to be careful that they don't uh, create copies of, which is why... Mm, why I really want to get rid of you. I mean, between Sosynthesis Blaze and Thunder, we can probably get rid of you on our next turn. But it means they have one more turn with Furcart staying here and giving them more ways to give us spying. Now that it's random, the unit that gets spying. Oh, no, stop doing that. <laughs> Just like how it's random, the unit that gets bleeding here. Who are you giving Veil? Okay, you already have Veil, that's fine. But now, oh, no, I don't want you to have Spy. Okay, that's unfortunate. Um, so, now, I mean, they're gonna create a copy of Drog, right? So, I think we do go Greatsword. We heal it up with the damage here. Use the Thunder and get you down to one, and then do the finishing job with the Revenants. I think that's the plan. Yeah, they're, and they're going to be off cooldowns. So they will absolutely create a copy of Drog. But that's kind of interesting, actually. I'm curious how they... Because it's going to convert some of their cards here. And this is an engine. So we'd like if they convert this in some ways. This has already done its thing since it's already created the rain and given the boost. So that's not as good for them to convert. At least not as good for us. So anyways, let us play Greatsword. I'm deliberately loading up in this melee row, so we have more room for Revenants. And the reason why we liked increasing the base power on Greatsword is after that 6 damage, now he's up to a 6 after that, so he's not nearly as vulnerable as he was previously, even after that deployability kicks in. So what we do now is we go, and we take Thunder, use that on Furcart, gives us a little bit of healing, lowers you down to a 5, rather than... Removing you all together with the Synthesis Blaze. Drop you to a 1. Finish the job there and spawn in a Revenant here. We can save this damage. I think we will. And then Unseen Elder, I mean, hopefully starts getting the right idea and actually tries to give bleeding to you. Thank you. And okay, there is the Drog. So it's a 10 power unit. Oh, they're putting in the melee rose. So they're going to convert the Mage Torturer. That's fine. Well, now they have another Mage Torturer. <laughs> Do I enjoy Give more spying. In this case, it is to the Great Sword. That's not terribly surprising. The problem here is that we don't love converting either of these guys into different units because they are both high base power, which is what we had a concern about was that they were going to create copies of good cards, which they now are certainly, they've already started to do, but they can continue to do. So, I mean, they're going to have one damage from this Revenant. If that damage is capable of destroying something, then that becomes a problem. But that is probably not going to be the case here. And we set up our Death Blow. We get... Ooh. I mean, if we are willing to sacrifice another Thunder. Three damage, drop you to a two. One damage, drop you to a one. One damage, get Death Blow. I mean, we could also do that with Gregoire. But for the same reason we were just saying we don't want them to steal these powerful cards, we also deliberately drew to Gregoire last because we don't want them to steal this. So, and if they get a tall unit like a Greatsword or a Drog, we can use Ulfheaden to significantly weaken it. So, it is nice in that way. We do have the Tears of Dragon, which we can use to convert something here, although we might wait for that. Is it worth converting a high power unit just to prevent them from getting one themselves? It'd be one thing if that would get rid of all the spying cards on our side, but it's only getting rid of one of the two. So, they can, if we. Get rid of a uh, spying greatsword, they can still create another drog. If we get rid of the drog spying unit, then they can still create a greatsword. So, it's not perfect. Um, hmm. Okay. 
yeah, I think we still proceed with this plan. Spawn in another Revenant in the process, and this could be the recipient of, and probably is the best recipient of Tears of Dragon. It's not guaranteed that it'll give us better value than it currently is, but as things currently stand, since this has already used its order ability, it's just three power body, not much else. Or four power body, and not much else, because you've already used your deploy ability, so it's a very minor upgrade. But an upgrade, nonetheless. Oh, we've not yet played a, a card from hand. I knew that. Um, we could lock this Revenants, but it's not really a huge factor. We could give the bleed to somebody and then go Proto Fletter. Then that gets a pretty big boost, but again, we want to be mindful of... Are they going to seal it? If they do, I mean, they still have plenty of options to steal. It's not like this would be substantially more powerful than these guys. It'd be around the same value. So it might, might still be worth considering. It's either that or it's lock you... Actually, no, we can't lock because no one's damaged right now, somewhat surprisingly. Old fed in 12 power unit is actually not bad. Great up. We'd like to save this for later on when we have more units on the board. And Gregoire, as we said, we want to wait, so I think it is probably Proto Flutter, to be honest. Probably Proto Flutter. And I think, you know, we want to get a lot of units in a row to set up the Great Oak. And because we can potentially continue to spawn in more Revenants, I don't think we're about to fill this row, but we would like to get it a little more crowded. I meant to do this first. Oops. Well, what it does do as it does mean that Proto Flutter is not as tall, not as big, which is actually in some ways a good thing. Because as we were saying before, we don't really want them to be to be creating a big copy of that. Ooh. Now this is interesting. When they create a copy of the Great Sword, it doesn't also get locked for them, I don't think. But it will be at nine power, so presumably that means they would be creating a copy of Drog on their next turn. I would assume. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So nothing in removal range for either this Revenant or for Gregoire. We were to Ulfed in here. I always forget if it rounds up or rounds down for damage, but we're talking five or six damage here. Drops it down to a five-ish power card, which is still not enough to set these things up. We do have a damage unit now, so we can lock things, but... You've already used your order ability. There really isn't much important stuff to lock at the moment. So it might just be in somewhat early Ulfed, and to be honest, on this guy. And maybe start setting you up to be in removal range for either this or this later on. I think that's what we're going for. It is six. So you'll drop down to a four at the end of your turn from the bleeding, at which point we could thunder and then either Gregoire or K20 Revenant on you. So, okay. That looks fine. We will create a copy. I think it's going to be of the Drog. We don't have any one power units right now, so that didn't really do anything. Drog will, well, convert everything over there into more Revenants. Unfortunately, it got rid of the bleed which was perhaps the biggest factor there. But uh, it does give them more damage collectively across those three. They can destroy this Revenant here. So we would like to do something to... I mean, potentially just lock one of them. And that is sufficient to prevent them from getting the death blow. Or we go, Tears of the Dragon, convert you into something else. If so, we should at least get the damage out first. What would we like? Maybe we damage, forget about the death blow, lock one of them, and convert. Maybe that's what we're looking at. Still want to try to get something comparatively weak here, so we, at the very end, have a way to set up Grigoire. But, for the moment, and now this is starting to get quite crowded here, but I think we can still go this route. Lock on the ones that hasn't used its order yet. 
convert you. And okay. Higher base power. And it damages our opponent's uh, units whenever they play one. Uh, so, I mean, the earlier you get this, the better. But it does support our damage centric deck. So that is fine. That works. Okay, Cantarello, play the top card from our deck. Which happens to be Sheila. Oh, uh, we, technically speaking, we did put her there <laughs> using a. Uh, Oh, and that gave them a one power card. Oh, that was very clever. The Revenants actually worked quite well for them there. Hmm. Now they have some two power Revenant. Actually, two power Sheila. Wait, did they get rid of, get rid of Unseen Elder? Whoa. Did not even realize he had gone that low. That's unfortunate. He's uh, given us a lot of value. He stayed on the board for a long time, so, you know good thing that we, I mean, then again, they converted a bunch of cards, they transformed a bunch of cards that had bleed, so we, we didn't actually realize all the damage that we were hoping to get from him, but let's see, they will use their leader ability on their next turn, so I think what we do here is we go Great Oak in this row, we focus on the damage in case they have a way to give spying on this turn, and then go leader ability, because we could go Thunder, drop you down to a 1, and Gregoire, but I don't want to do that right now, because if they can apply Vlee, or rather, apply Spying, and then afterward, create a copy of that with their leader ability, then they're talking about getting a huge Gregoire, so I want to avoid that, and I think, you know, that they can copy boost, but they can't copy damage, at least. Uh, they'll get the deploy ability damage on Great Oak, but it's not like he's going to have a bunch of base power. So, if we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we can get seven damage here. So, I mean, the bleed would still kill you. It's not like that drops you down. I mean, it would would drop you down to one, but then you'd go away. Um, so, maybe we just go Revenants in that case. I want all the cards to the left. We could get rid of you. The assumption of if they do try to create a uh, great oak, then it slightly weakens it. Yeah, sure. Okay, and just spamming Drog it actually does mean there will be a one power, unless they boost this up right now. Of course, they boost it up right now. <laughs> I was gonna say that was gonna be a one power card. Cross the target with Gregoire, unfortunately. Ultimately, was not so, but they will not have their leader ability on their last turn. They will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage from all these remnants, which does add up to be quite a bit and means they could definitely destroy this long ship and create another remnants in this row and then potentially even create another one when they destroy Malane here, although they don't have room for another remnant after that, so it somewhat limits the value they can get from that. We could try converting this long ship into something else that is currently our weakest card. It technically would still damage the next unit that they play, so if they don't know exactly what order they're going to do all their things in, they should destroy it first, but if they played the card and then did all the damage, then it still gets one more damage, so it's functionally worth four. Decent chance we can still swap you into something else that's worth more. Certainly, with Hemdall. Missed the deployability, unfortunately, would have been really good on that melee row, but it is a higher base power unit, so not bad in that way. Fregoire, we're looking for a way to get your death blow. Um, do we need to thunder on you to set it up? I mean, we could, but we have a 30 point lead. They'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage and three power units spawned in here, so 10 points from just these orders alone. That puts them up to functionally 55 or 54, or the equivalent thereof, which means this last card needs to be a 20. That feels unlikely, and that's before we even get the seven point body on Gregoire. So I feel like with this, just being a seven point unit on the board, even without the death blow, that should be enough that we do not need to set up the death blow here and we can save a little bit of energy think we're fine we'll see if that decision comes back to haunt us it's hoakim which is a big point slam 
But what card do they get from their deck is the real question. They are splitting their damage like crazy here. That is not the way to do it. So we'll still take the win. Yeah, they, uh, they definitely botched that last turn. But either way, this guy definitely seems like he's significantly tougher when you're using Bulwark. So could add a card. We'll see if there's anything absolutely amazing here. I mean, Mork Fog would be a really nice addition. But, uh, so we've said on prior occasions, several prior occasions on this run, I had said for highly boosted cards, if we happen to portal and get this specific card, it would have been useful, but alas, we already have a lot of good cards, and that means that we already can control, already guarantee that we're going to draw into all of our existing good cards. So if we add Morkbarg to the equation, that means we're going to have to dump one of our other good cards in order to make room for him in the actual hand that we will play. So you have to bear that in mind. How much better is he than what would otherwise be the worst card that we'd actually play, which would probably be Sheila? Is he a big upgrade from Sheila, or would we rather remove our weakest card, our Panther. I think we do this. I think we do this because this is very clearly our worst card, and that means that you know the only way we were ever going to have to play one of our weak cards was if we draw into it immediately and don't have the time to mulligan it. And so it was still possible that we get a Panther, but not anymore. Okay. So now we can go Elite Battle, or we can go Event, and I think we go Event. Especially because this has an extra place of power, which just generally feels like that is a good thing for us to do. And we've said this, I mean, this is presumably going to cost us a fair bit of energy to succeed here. And the upgrade is, eh. So I think we go here. Let's see what we end up with. No! Okay, well, it costs us 15 energy. I mean, if you compare that to the Elite Battle... Elite Battle probably was going to cost us more than 15 energy. Obviously, it would have come with an upgrade to go along with that, but the wind strengthens, kicking up blankets of powdery snow before turning into a full-on gale. You shield your face from the unrelenting torrent of snow, from the shards of ice splintering in the storm and whipping toward you. I think we just... We just lose the 15 energy, especially because we have a place of power next which we can use to restore that energy. You somehow manage to find a small cave in the rocks where you take shelter until the blizzard dies down. So yeah, we were originally thinking we might be able to afford going for the other upgrade here rather than the energy. But after that loss of 15 there, we might just play it safe here and nab the energy. It's Yeah, especially because we've now removed basically all of our worst cards. Now we, we still have what are the, our worst ones left. Um, the Melusine Cultus probably be the weakest links, but they're not that bad. And at this point... There really are our only not so great cards in our deck, so the chances of us getting our our hand totally brick with them, when if we draw into them immediately, we can still mulligan them. So I think we take the energy here, and at this point, we have a lot. Seventy one puts us in a comfortable place for what it will be two battles and then boss fight, and no time to restore energy in between. So we're hoping still have a little bit of energy. I think we can spend here. And then by the time we get to the boss, we'll be able to still spend very aggressively. Of course, depends on what we encounter here, though. Ah. May the gods grant us well, it was a nice run. It's the hard version. Bloodthirst 6, destroy all enemy units instead. Cool down 2. So basically... He has tons and tons of damage, can even spawn in damage units on our side of the board. And then if we get six damage units and they are using their leader ability, they can destroy everything we have, which basically means it's an auto win for them. So here is one of the Meliusine Cultists. This is, if it does show up, we want it to show up here so we can get rid of it now. And... Mm. Technically speaking... Technically speaking, that was going to give us a boost. That is kind of what you want against the Highland Warlord. You can get boosted. You start damaged, which is really scary. You can get boosted and get a shield. Boosted by a lot and get a shield. So you're great. You're potentially okay. You can get boosted. That's good. You're scary. You're scary. However... 
being able to convert, transform some damage units into other cards could be uh, a lifesaver here. I think we dump you. All right, well, that's our other weakest card in addition to the, uh, the cultist. However, you take damage and then you convert into a different card altogether. So that in some ways gives you a little bit of resilience, a little bit of counter ability against this ability here. And we draw to Ulfhead first anyway. So we should set up the magnifying spy glasses and we might want to do this a little bit differently than we have in the past. Like, look at this. We've removed a ton of cards from our deck. So it is almost all the good stuff here. We have Drog, Jenga, Sosynthesis Blaze, Unseen Elder, and Sheila. So we can draw to what? It's four additional cards, right? So normally it would be something like one, two, three, and either four or four. But does the fact that them dealing damage is a humongous problem change anything? I don't know if I like Drog. Spawning in a bunch more units with the Revenants gives them much more ability to have lots of damage units on our side of the board and more easily trigger their, their leader ability, Bloodthirst. So we might deliberately not use Drog, or if we do, we'll play him at the very, very end of the match. Yeah, I think he's the one that is most concerning. And so the one that we pick here is going to be the one that we pick, draw into last. I mean, you could potentially make a case for Melusine Cultus. As I was saying before, it has one armor, which is not a huge factor, but it's enough to avoid getting damaged once. And then the boost can further assist us when it comes to avoiding getting damaged. So is that reason enough to actually choose you over something like so Synthesis Blaze, which would normally be a good card for us. Decent base power, five damage, but does not have anything that helps us avoid their leader ability, which is a huge threat. Mm. I mean, so we might still get Drog for our last card, because if we do... Ah, if we do and we convert everything to Revenant, it still takes a turn before... We can get the, the damage from everyone, so I'm still not sure that's worth it. Yeah. Okay. Last card, I think, in that case... Might be Jenga? I think we do that. Then it's gonna be... Drawn to you when we go to the next Spyglass. You first. Possibly two and three. Possibly. Do we want you guys? I don't think we want you, but do we want you? Because usually, I think we've found with this guy, this enemy does not score many points. It's just that he has so many ways to set up his leader ability. And it's, it's all or nothing. It's totally binary. It's you win if he doesn't trigger the bloodthirst. You lose if he does. So with that in mind, I think we're, we're just looking 100% at, at creating counters for the leader ability. So we'll still get Unseen Elder early, but we'll we'll go Melusine Cultus. We will. I think so. And we're going to aggressively use Cleanse here and or I think Portal is risky, but I mean, it could potentially give us cards that get boosted, but that's a not sure that's a risk we want to take. So... I think we go Greatsword first and heal off whatever damage they want to try to throw at us initially. I think that's the plan. I off three heads with one he scares me a bit because he's starting off as a damaged card, but he can heal himself, which I suppose is nice. Okay. Get Unseen Elder, another card that does not inherently get itself boosted. We don't immediately have anything that we want to convert. We could make the case for <laughs> transforming the Greatsword so that you get something that uh, is not immediately damaged, but I think because we can heal him in some ways, that is still beneficial. Unseen Elder is perhaps more of a, a problem here. 
because he does not have a way to heal off damage. And immediately gets damage from this longship. So I think what we'll do here is we will immediately use this four fleet on you, which means we're going to want to use Proto Flutter soon as well. But we should boost up on Scene Elder. Another long ship. Everything is support for that leader ability. Everything is. Okay. So we can use the cultist to... Oh, I mean, even this is not... That armor is still not enough to tank the damage from double long ship, unfortunately. So, I mean, I was going to say we put you next on Scene Elder, and we can boost up on Scene Elder as well that way. I think that's still what we're doing here. Accept this offering that we might make the coast safely. But I think we are we are spamming a whole bunch of cleanses here, and that's why we were making a point of picking up the extra energy from that most recent place of power, because this this battle could be more difficult than the final boss. That card looks familiar. What this? Okay, so I think. And other thing that we've found, so this guy is actually the one enemy that we've lost to, right? Yeah, the one enemy that's ever beaten us. What we've seen was that one thing to consider is that it's tempting to say you want to boost every card against him and just, just barely have them uh, either at their starting power or slightly above their starting power. But if you do that, he has several ways to damage every card on the board by one or two points. And then, for that reason, can get a whole bunch of damage units in one quick burst. However, if instead, you prioritize getting a few cards highly boosted to the point where even after they get damaged by a small number once or twice, they remain undamaged, that means that uh, you can perhaps avoid reaching that six damage unit threshold so for that reason, I think it might be preferable to throw the Meliocene Cultists in the same row as each other and try to just use them to boost stuff like crazy and just say, okay, these are the cards in this row that we're not going to allow to get damaged. We dare not set sail without her blessing. You know how it goes. But the rain here, that means it'll boost Unseen Elder and this other Meliocene Cultist. This is one of their most dangerous cards. Because it spawns in three units that immediately get damaged. Fortunately, they destroyed one of them with the random damage from what was previously uh, Drone Berserker. So we could lock one of these longships, which would actually be quite convenient. With Jenga. I do like that. I do like that. Yeah. I think we do that. The other one is still going to be able to damage us. It's a little unfortunate. That means one more damage unit. However, you will boost Jenga back up to an 8. So you'll be on your base power and then on our next turn we'll use this again and continue to boost you by one every turn so it's not a huge huge concern yet but just the fact that they spawn in those two one power units over here is kind of scary and the reason other reason why i'm not just immediately destroying you from the thunder on you is because you'll be one power actually no you're gonna get ah, you're gonna get destroyed between the bleed damage and the rain damage i forgot about the rain damage I was going to say, if you're a one, that makes an easy target for a Gregoire on our next turn. Actually, you'll be a one. So we will still have a Gregoire target for our next turn. So that's good. Oh, it's, ah, this is exactly what this is for. Exactly what this is for. So let us convert you. To do business with you is ever a pleasure. Draw a card, then move a card from your hand to the bottom of your deck. So if we don't like cards in our hand, we can swap some of them out. We actually do know what we're going to draw into here. 
Uh, it's good cards, but ones that we were concerned would not play as well against this guy. So, it's an option. It is an option. Oh, also, we were saying we were going to do um, Proto Flutter earlier, and we, alas, did not proceed to do that, so we missed out on some boosts on Proto Flutter, unfortunately. But now what we do is so we go Meliusian Cultus once again, Rain over here, and now Jenga will actually be boosted above his base power. And we have a one power unit here. So I think, once again, we are just looking to get highly boost a few highly boosted cards. And you are the most capable of remaining boosted, Gregoire. So I think we can push you in the other row. Shield and boosted by 10. Unless they have more card, which I'm not sure that he has. I think he's mostly damage a bunch of enemies by a little bit, rather than damage one enemy by a whole lot type of cards. Okay. Do we swap, say, a Berserker or Ulfedin into something else? I mean, we're getting rid of something that does not boost but deals damage in order to get something else that does not boost but deals damage. So I'm not super thrilled about that either way you will be get up to a nine but we have one damage card and a few cards that could easily become damage which makes me a little nervous you're on cooldown though on this turn so i think we're okay as things currently stand offering to the sea that's exactly what i was talking about lots of little bits of damage you actually get rid of this deafening siren which would have been the card we would convert with tears of, of the dragon but, uh, okay. So yeah, that healing from damage has actually been very helpful. Now, we do want to still load up on cards in this row, though, to power up Great Oak and give it a bigger boost so that this becomes another card that they won't be able to get rid of or make damaged. So, Roto Fletter on you. Obviously, it's overkill in terms of how much bleed we're applying, but again, that's kind of the name of the game for Proto Fletter, as we've said in the past. It will get you up to plus four, which is not impossible for them to make you damaged, but it's unlikely for that to be the case. So I think we still do that. I'm wondering if we swap out Drum and Berserker for something else, but, or Ulfed, I think this is the last play. These two are the ones that are most susceptible to becoming damaged, but you can convert into a different card if you get damaged, so that's a little bit of a a counter, and this just will get damaged. <laughs> so that's why we're definitely going to play this last. But, okay. I think we can make do here. So you are off cooldown on this turn. Hemdal, another bunch of damage. Especially if we have a lot of cards in a row, but we made a point of making sure you guys were fairly boosted, so only one card that is now damaged. And we could convert you into something else if we really wanted to. You're no longer going to receive boost from Meliusine Cultus. So we might lose points in the process because you were at eight base power card. Yeah, you're actually damaged by two. So we might lose points in the process, but we will lose a damaged card and replace it with a base power card. Same could be said here, but you do have an ability that we can still use, whereas same cannot be said for you. Also your six power, your seven power. So I think we do it. Ooh. Ooh. And you actually can become highly boosted. We'll take a turn before we can pull that off, but that is... Very interesting. So now it's either the Drummond Berserker, and we accept the fact that it might take a little bit of damage, and if it does, then it will hopefully flip into its Bear Abomination and not remain damaged. Or we go Great Oak. Obviously, the longer we wait to play Great Oak, the stronger it can become, the more units we load up on this row with. So maybe we get a little bit greedy and do you first. Because you're on cooldown for this turn. Don't damage this. We like that. Uh, they do have Morkvarg. Oh, so that should be on Gregoire. Wow. I didn't think they had him. I don't... I'm not sure if we've seen uh, this enemy use that before. But, uh, yeah. Okay, well, now we can do this. Huge boost there. We have one, two, three damage units and one base power unit right now. We need to get up to six. So, we can go Great Oak. 
and get another boosted card for sure. I want to play you all the way over here. The question is just, are we going to need to take other corrective action here to make sure that they don't... Make sure that they don't get to six damage cards, so... You take one damage, you should flip. Actually, you will flip into a Bear Abomination at the end of our turn. But then if they deal any damage at all, then you will get damaged and stay damaged. So we'll end this turn with two damage cards. Hmm. You're damaged by one. You're damaged by one. Throw a cleanse out here on one of these guys. You have already used your ability, so we're most likely to use Tears of the Dragon on either you or you on our last turn. So that was mostly a safety net. Might not have needed it, but Octus is very scary. Damage everyone by one on the turn in which they were going to use their leader ability, and they couldn't pull it off, so that's huge. Now they will be on cooldown for the last turn, so no need to worry about that anymore, and that means we can just... Breathe a sigh of relief here. Damn, it's our highest card. And convert something just for the sake of converting something. It's worse. But it shouldn't matter. They have one card left, but with no leader ability, they would have to do something absolutely incredible to pull off this win here. Wild Boar of the Sea is a great finisher, but it's definitely still not enough. So that was probably the single most dangerous enemy that we could have encountered, including the boss. I think more dangerous than even that. So that is a good sign that we are able to send him off. Just take a quick look here. No thank you, Artis. That would be a scary card if you had Artis in that encounter. Wow. Um, more bleed. Movements. Not really sure that makes a ton of sense. As we've said before, we already have... For the most part, all the good cards we want. And if anything, there's just, you know, one or two weaker cards we'd like to remove. And these are not them. Unless we want to get rid of Proto Flutter, but I don't think that we do. I think we're just skipping this one. Okay. One more normal battle. We're on 59 energy. We had to spend some there, for sure. But eventually we got to a point where on a few turns we didn't have to use our leader ability, fortunately. So we want to, of course, have a decent amount going into the boss battle. But alas, we shall see what we end up with here. As our final enemy, it's the Succubus Mistress. I know we've seen her before. I don't remember what she does, though. Hard enemy. At the end of your turn, move a random enemy unit with two power or less to the opposite row and boost it by three. So she steals our cards, basically. Ooh. So it's kind of similar. To what we just saw where we want to have some highly boosted cards and that's not necessarily something we do a great job of naturally that's we focus more on the damage than we do on the boosting it's good to see Gregoire it's good to see Great Oak you know boosting cards here Unseen Elder obviously is our key card yes but he doesn't get boosted so he is susceptible to getting stolen so we could play him and immediately boost him that's an option Jenga also does not do any boosting, but he is normally good. I think the cards we want to see here would be Greatsword. It'd be hard for them to steal. Grog, kind of on the fence about. On one hand, the Revenants that we spawn in, assuming that we get the Death Blow and spawn in three power Revenants, those would possible or not immediately possible for them to steal, but it wouldn't take much effort for them to become stealable. But on one hand, you know, if we want to distract them with those revenants and try to sneak past other cards that otherwise might get stolen. We can convert and transform weak cards into something else to avoid them getting stolen. Is at the end of every turn. Doesn't even have a cooldown. That's also kind of scary. I think we're getting rid of you. Okay. Well, this that's 
You do boost, but you are a three power card, which is kind of not ideal. Um, these are, as we were saying in the previous encounter, the weakest card we, we, that we have remaining in our deck. But once again, they kind of sort of counter this to an extent that uh, our other cards do not. At least with the boost, although they have low base power, which is unfortunate. For our Spyglass, let's... This will be the last card we draw into. Generally, Ulfheden is pretty good for that. Other cards we're going to want. Definitely, Greatsword's going to be the first one we go for, I think. Probably still you 2 just because of the high base power. And that's another reason why Jenga is not terrible. But I guess we'll finish with you guys. Then the top cards. First pick will definitely be Greatsword. Yes, you. And then you have one higher base power. I don't remember how much they have in the way of engines versus just cards we want to damage. Yes, we'll go for you just because you synergize more with the Greatsword. So we'll start with Unseen Elder. I think we will immediately boost him up with Cleanse because he is susceptible to getting stolen. And if he does, we're in serious trouble. But he does support our other cards, of course. Perhaps most importantly, makes it so that Proto Fighter becomes another highly boostable card. So we do this. The gate must be so we cleanse you. And then we see. Presumably they have a lot of damage to help set this up, but I don't remember. Yennefer Conjurer is damaged. Nothing to pick up when I'm done with you. Okay, damage is the highest card or cards if they are tied for the same amount, but that just means if we have some highly boosted cards that they should remain relatively safe, and it actually means we have a little bit of time to use Melusine Cultus here, theoretically. It could get damaged and then stolen, but might be a chance that we take here. So we'd like to get you down early and use that to help boost up some of our cards that we want to make sure we keep, like on Zine Elder. So I think we do this. Hear my prayer! Could have potentially made a case for boosting you up. Okay. That is going to be damage. Wait. What? You get zeal? Immediately? In multiplayer Gwent, that requires a certain setup to get zeal, and you didn't have it, so I assumed you weren't going to have it, but you did. That's concerning. Um, okay. In that case, Unseen Elder is very close to getting stolen, which obviously we don't want to have happen. We can boost you up with Melusine Cultus. If we do this, that'll get you up to a six. Then we can get another Melusine Cultus down here and put it on the other side of Unseen Elder. That'll boost you up to a 7. Lead us eh? with crests. Lead us through storms. It's weird. We are playing our weakest cards first, which makes me kind of nervous. But it's all in the name of getting a higher power Unseen Elder. Okay, so you will continue to get boosted a little bit more, which is useful. And, I mean, we could convert you guys, but we want to have you continue to boost stuff. That is helpful. So then what we can do is we could apply a bunch of bleed to you with the order ability and play Proto Flutter, and that becomes a card that would be very hard to reach that two power threshold. So in some ways, it's a good thing that they're getting greedy. They're trying to steal our biggest card, and rather than settling for just stealing a cultus. So it has been useful for us. Let's do this first. And then do this. So this card can heal itself. So the bleed damage is probably going to be insignificant. But it's mostly just a, a means by which to boost up Proto Flutter because it already had some bleeding on it. So we can add more rain, but let's hold off for the time being. Uh, well, no, we'll do it now. It just loads up for the time being. Still going... Okay, now you are sealable. Which I think is going to happen, because they can do it at the end of every turn. Right? I think? Yes. Boost them up as well. So we would have converted you into something else, but... Didn't really want to do that until we had finished with all the rain. Otherwise, we were taking away 
some of the boosts we were going to have. So we've already used the order ability, thankfully, so it's not like you're about to apply rain to us. Um, hmm. Similarly here. I mean, do we need the boosts on you? You can get two more boosts of un on Unseen Elder and two more boosts on something else we played here. Also eyeing potentially destroy this Treant Boar, which would be otherwise a somewhat difficult task to achieve. Hmm. Don't yet have anything that's in removal range for Gregoire, unless we thunder on you. I'd like to avoid spending energy if we can before going into the, the boss fight. Obviously, this can give us a bigger chunk of damage, which could set up a bunch of other things on our next turn. Including you. Hmm. What do we like here? There is some bleed. And rain. So you could actually get healed quite quickly. Maybe for that reason we play you. Technically speaking, you are least in need of boosts because your healing is only up to a maximum of your base power so the, the boost is just kind of taken away from oh i don't like that well we lowered him down to a one and the interesting thing is we could play him in this row and then immediately transform him not convert anything into a drog but that is an option in fact, an option I'd kind of like to pursue here, because then we get this off cooldown more quickly, and the rain at that point will have ended, and so we won't have any need for the cultist anymore, and we can hopefully transform this into something that has higher base power and is less likely to get stolen. So I, I think we do that. Okay, granted that's not what we wanted to see. That's a problem. In several ways. She's easily damageable and stealable, you can damage it down to a two and steal her. Which presumably they will do. I mean, they could alternatively steal this damage and steal this. But uh, actually, no, they don't have the damage to make that happen. Um, with the armor there. But then if they steal her, she will also still be able to use that order ability, which is obviously not something we want to allow them to do. So this, unfortunately, is a necessity. Is a necessity. Didn't want to. But we took our chances a little bit on the RNG and it did not pay off for us. Ooh, ooh, they are sealing Unseen Elder. Very well set up. Tons of damage. Eventually the greed paid off with Mage Infiltrator plays there. They could seal this too for what it's worth, although that's not a huge problem, and that is a card we'd love to convert. But, okay. Obviously Unseen Elder will give them lead damage, so we'd like to get rid of this. We can deal three damage from Sheila. Deal, we can deal two damage from Great Oak if we'd like. I was gonna say we'd focus on the boost with you, but you have eight base power, so maybe that's not that much of a concern. Yeah. Oh, we can destroy Sheila as well, or Yennefer rather as well with Gregoire, which right now, well, right now Yennefer is stuck damaging the Great Sword, which is just healing off that damage, so she's actually not a huge threat. So we can probably delay this. So this is something we like, but we won't do it yet. Then, I think that means we are looking Great Oak. Getting rid of Great Oak plus Sheila to get rid of Unseen Elder and or Treant Boar. In fact, we might actually prefer getting rid of Nithral with Gregoire on our next turn. Which one of these do we prefer getting rid of? Unseen Elder is slow damage. This is a combination of damage and healing. Guess we'll still go after Unseen Elder. It means we need two damage from you. So we need two cards to the left, right? Damage by number of cards to the left. Always need to double check that one. Make sure that I have the, the damaging and boosting sides properly set up. So this is going to get stolen. But rather that than this. 
curious what they choose to do here. That's stealable now, which is preferable to that, but okay. If you insist, we'll now convert you so you're no longer stealable. And then, oh, they, how'd they get that boost? I don't know, but alas, I think we had said. Artist, why? This is not the first time you've made an uninvited, uh, made yourself an uninvited guest. Some unexpected artist appearances. Technically speaking, Gregoire, with the death blow, with the shield, can avoid taking the damage here, but this is not what we wanted to see. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, um, yeah, that... Thank goodness for shields. Lacerates means Artis is, uh, no, they need two power cards. Okay, you can steal Artis. But now we can destroy Artis, which I would like to do right now, preferably. So we can do that with Ulfheden plus Thunder, although that means we won't have time to use the Synthesis Blaze. So do we perhaps instead settle for Playing the Synthesis Blaze, it'll get damaged by... I always forget if it rounds up or rounds down. Let's say, let's be conservative. Damage by four, drop you down to a three, means they need one damage, which they will not be able to get from anything here. That's in healing mode. This hits the highest unit, which is you. Actually, you. This hits the highest unit, which is you. They'd have to have another source of damage. So I'm just wondering if we need to use cleanse on it. Probably. I mean, we can probably pretty safely assume one of these cards is going to deal damage. And they're going to target a card that is potentially sealable, such as this. Most easily sealable, such as this. So, I think it is still a cleanse. I think it is still a cleanse. And if we had a larger lead right now, we could perhaps say, okay, you know... It's not the end of the world if they pull off that steal, but I think they have a large enough lead, or it's close enough, I should say. Especially after that, which would have allowed them to steal. It's close enough that we needed to play that one safely. So now what we do is we do the five damage, which we can use to destroy you are actually, well, so right now artist is worth two damage on us. It might be worth more, I might damage them by more than it damages us, so it's actually not a huge problem right now. Although it would make Ulfeden stealable. We could play Ulfeden and then proceed to transform Ulfeden. So it would be our weakest card. So that's maybe the right play here. What would be the target? They don't have anything that's very highly boosted. If we hit you, drop you down to a... Two or a three, we could destroy you. We may or may not be able to destroy you as well. I mean, it's just seeing how many of the engines can we actually get rid of here. So I'd like to, you're technically, you're two damage per turn. So you're more powerful than you are. So that's a higher priority. If we damage you with old Fen, takes two damage to destroy you. Maybe three damage left, we can destroy you as well. That's honestly probably best. Even if it means slightly less effective from Ulfeden. Remove you. Remove you. Getting rid of much of their damage setup. And then convert you. Gotta go with your gut. Also a two power card that is immediately sealable. Although it does set a non-boosted enemy unit down to one. So even if they steal him, we can at least weaken... One well, of you guys don't make it the Lubberkin, because they can transform this into the boss. Oh, without changing power. So, I mean, it, alas, it could work. But, pick your pick. So, 23 points lead. They will steal you, which will get boosted by three. So, that is a minus two for us, a plus five for you. So, that's a seven point swing. That gets them up to what would functionally be 29 to 45. Um, so I need a little less than 20 points from this last card. And I'll get one point from this as well. Do they need, like, you know, high teens? Is it possible? Yes. Is it likely? Probably not. How daring are we feeling? Is this close enough? Do we feel okay here? 
50 energy an important threshold or maybe we just throw out three more to play it safe potentially prevent them from using their leader ability they might still be able to drop one of these guys down to ceiling range but we shall see we shall see uh, excuse me it does change power just flat out lied okay um <laughs> all right I mean, that's a bug. Okay, I mean, we can add to the deck another Great Oak, which is a very good card. As we've said many times before in this run, we technically don't really need more good cards because we can already guarantee we draw some more or all of the ones that we have. Now, would we like to have Great Oak, another Great Oak, instead of something like, I think Sheila has generally been the card we've said is sort of the the last good card that we want to play Ulf head in potentially as well. And we're about to go into the dragon fight, which does flood our board with a lot of stuff. Actually powers up great Oak. Whereas Ulf head in, I don't remember how much power they, they build up on their units. You know, how effective is Ulf head in or Sheila? It is probably still better than Sheila. Let's just see what our options would be here. Remove Sheila. Yeah, I, I guess we add Great Oak. All right. 47 energy going into the boss fight here. I think that means we might not be able to go 100% all out energy every single turn, but it's pretty close to something like that. So let's jump in. All right, the first enemy that we fought, first boss we fought, I should say. So as a reminder, order freeze an enemy unit, cooldown two, so you can do that every other turn. Whenever a freezing unit is destroyed, spawn a frozen adventurer on its row, and these are the guys that clog our rows. We can get rid of them if we get units on either side of them, but they can make matters quite difficult. And the other thing is that freezing, what does that do? Units with the status are destroyed when moved. So that's the thing. They apply a bunch of freezing, and then they try to move our cards so they can destroy our cards that have freezing, and we'll be flooded with the frozen adventurers worth zero points. And uh, they'll destroy everything that actually is worth value. So the other thing is that, look at the wings here. If a freezing enemy unit is destroyed, freeze its adjacent units and damage them by two. Death wish your opponent draws a card. So we actually can get additional cards here. And that means that magnifying spyglass, uh, controlling which cards we draw into actually could be worth additional value here. And our damage could certainly be helpful here as well. Freezing enemy units cannot be boosted. That's the thing. Somehow, we defeated this enemy with a Bulwark deck last time because uh, the cards that got frozen were the ones that were doing the boost-ing, not the ones that got boost-id, fortunately. So, that's what we're dealing with here. We obviously would like to destroy the wings. Which one would you prioritize? Probably this, because we're likely going to be doing less boosting, or boosts that we do have are instantaneous, like with Gregoire. And Greatsword technically is healing rather than boosting, so that is a distinction that at least in multiplayer Gwent means that the freezing on the Greatsword would not prevent it from continuing to heal itself. In Rogue Mage, is that also the case? I would think, but we have been proven wrong on some occasions when we tried to carry over that logic. But anyways, I think that does mean we definitely want to try to minimize the boosting engines like the Melusine Cultist because those could get shut down entirely by the freezing. Okay. So now let's control what we draw into here. We got a Drone Berserker is probably the one card that we are not a huge fan of here. Ulf head in. We had some questions as to whether this was going to be uh, big enough, important enough for us to draw into, but I think we'll be looking at certainly Unseen Elder, Probably top priority. 
Then... Can we lock a wing? I think we can. Shouldn't be anything stopping us from doing that. And then I'm trying to remember. I should remember this. You destroy a Death Wish unit? Does it still trigger the Death Wish? Because technically it's it's been destroyed and when it's destroyed it can't be locked so it, it still takes effect. Because obviously we want the Death Wish to trigger here. So we'd love to shut down this ability and still allow this to happen. I'm not entirely sure if we want to go that route. They will have other cards, I remember. Other units that they play that are based around and synergized with the freezing. So we could just opt to lock those instead of the wings and just try to go all in on the damage on these guys. So... Okay. First... Not sure what I think about Drog. Not sure what I think about him because on one hand... Loading up on units is both a good thing and a bad thing against this enemy because you can get more units on either side of the frozen adventurers to more quickly remove them, which is good. You can also fill a row, which will prevent them from moving cards, which is significant because that means that if you can't move something, you can't destroy a freezing card. So that's also nice, but on the other hand, if we can't play anything because we are completely, completely uh, full in both rows, then... That's obviously no good. So... That's why I'm on the fence with Drog. I do like Great Oak. So I think it's probably one... Maybe two... Three... Well, we would like to get you kind of early if we are going to play you, so I guess... One, two, three, four, five, maybe? Then six. Something like that. Or actually, Proto Flutter last, because we can potentially now control every card we draw into, because we will potentially get two more cards when we destroy the wings. So this is cards four, five, and six right here, which I think we said if it's, if it's one, two, and three, that means maybe... Four, five, six, something like that. Four, five, six. Then... One... Two, and... Three, right? I think? I might have double counted one of those, I hope I didn't. But, okay. So now, in terms of what we'd like to lead off with... I think... We start, we want to play things next to the Frozen Adventurers as quickly as possible to remove those as quickly as possible. We also may be able to convert cards that are frozen with Tears of the Dragon. Kind of fitting, in that case, if we remove the freezing that way and counter the dragon. So, uh... We might go to Synthesis Blaze first. Try to get some damage going early. And maybe... Really aggressively go after a wing. I think we do that. And I think... We use a portal here, looking for damage, and we get a card to put on the other side of this. Darn. <laughs> ah, if we hadn't upgraded it, it would have been a five, and we'd have had a guaranteed way to destroy one of the wings. This definitely happened in our previous encounter against this enemy. This absolutely happened. On our first turn as well, I think. And then, of course, it gives us only cards that boost. That boost themselves. Which is... Not something that synergizes at all with, uh, or is something that this enemy counters. So this was kind of extremely mean on several, several levels. Uh, so this destroys our own card. So we obviously don't want to do that. Um, we could play something that immediately convert it with our Tears of the Dragon. I suppose that's an option. Which Apprentice probably would be the best option here. Except that it boosts itself. So if it gets frozen, it's useless. So which one is... You're the one that prevents frozen enemies from getting boosted. I mean, we could go after you, but I think we play this and we just immediately convert it. Okay, and it's a seven point frog. I mean, we don't get the deployability, but it is higher base power, so it's at least something. And we'll start to whittle away at the timer on this frozen adventurer. Okay, and they freeze this. So yeah, they were going to freeze something. Every three turns, move a freezing enemy unit. So this is the card we want to lock. 
It'll take a little bit of time before they can do that. And next turn, I believe we are getting Jenga, is what we had set up. So I think we save that lock for you. And then we're focusing on damage for now. I'm trying to get rid of a wing quickly. So that means... I mean, if you didn't have all the armor, Ulfheden would be decent against you, but unfortunately, you do, so it's not that great. Great Oak with the Frozen Adventure is actually contributing toward uh, how much damage we could get with this. So, one, two, three, four. Drop you down to six power, two armor. Five damage here. Gets you dead, so that's functionally in eight. This gets you down to a three. Thunder destroys you. Yeah, that's pretty tempting. Or we could go after you. I think we do focus on you first. I think we do. Okay, I believe Great Oak is going to count these guys, both you and you, when determining the damage. I really hope so. I really hope so. It did. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, then use Thunder, take you out, and in doing so, significantly weaken you and draw a card, and this is the lock that we could use, I'm thinking, on this Wild Hunt Bruiser, because this really synergizes well with their freezing. And there goes the, uh, the frozen dude. Don't like you either. So these cards have all done their thing already. So there's something to be said for converting them all with Drog. We also have the transformation with Tears of Dragon, which I think can remove a freeze. But we want to lock you. I think you're top priority here. Oh, well, technically... Yeah, they're going to freeze. Even if we even if we convert this into a non-frozen unit, they can freeze on their next turn and then move and immediately destroy, assuming they use this logical order of operations. So... I think what we do... I mean, we'd like to get Unseen Alert out here quickly, of course. But I'm not sure we can afford to do that. Probably need to Jenga. Unless, I mean, we could technically Ulfheden. Could Ulfheden. That drops you to a three and then Thunder and that gets rid of you. That's not terrible. I kind of like that. They can freeze again, but they can't destroy anything with the freeze because we'll have gotten rid of the Wild Hunt Bruiser. So that might be actually our best option here. I think so. So let's go all fed in. We'll go Thunder. Get rid of you. Could convert you. Probably gonna lose power if we do, but we'll lose the freeze as well, which it's not as threatening anymore, especially since we got rid of their Wild Hunt Bruiser. But I think we can settle for now and wait for something better, like that we might be able to turn you into something better, certainly at least power-wise, but potentially ability-wise as well. If we take our chances on that, maybe we do. No prisoners. Okay. One higher base power, one armor. Unfortunately, no deployability. That would have been amazing to break through the armor on the wing here. But alas, not so. Okay. What is this? Consumer Frozen Adventure? Uh-oh. We were about to get rid of that. Okay, so we have another Great Oak. You can do that every turn. There are no more Frozen Adventurers, though, so... Not really gonna do anything else here. So Great Oak can still be another source of damage for us. But we could have locked one of you guys. Because we... Yeah, we dealt with the Bruiser in a different way, so we do still have Jenga to lock something. Like to get Unseen Elder out quickly, though. So we've already delayed this more than I'd like to delay it. I think we go here. The gate must be secure. I think we bleed you in particular. Might wait for the free bleed and see where that applies, but we'd really like to bleed you. Because bleed ignores armor. So that's a fantastic way to hit you through that armor. And I would go portal here, 
Except we don't have any frozen adventurers to... At least not anymore, to try to get rid of. Could see if we get something like Morkvarg, which would be, of course, awesome, but... I mean, we have... 35 energy. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 more turns. So that means... 5 energy per turn. Which means... We can't portal every turn, but we could at least thunder or cleanse every turn. So I think that means we'll at least hit you. Of course, if we destroy you, then we're drawing another card and we'll have more energy, or we'll have more time to spend our energy. But you know, that's a that's a good problem to have if that happens. Reason many unit. We've shut down most of their free support. It's not as much of an issue. And, okay, we did not get the free lead on you, unfortunately. But at this point... Oh, also, Unseen Elder might have been the one exception to a card we wanted to play in this row, because these were all cards we were okay with converting with Drog. Unseen Elder, we don't want to do that to. So that's... I mean, we did it because we wanted to get a bigger Great Oak, but... Works for you, it doesn't work for you. So, Great Oak, one, two, three, four, five damage. If we go against you, you're functionally a nine right now, so that lowers you down to four, which is not quite enough to remove with our leader ability. Mm -hmm. There is a synergy here. Freeze an enemy. We might have shut down. Synergies from one of the wings and from the bruiser, but you will get boosted by two every time the freeze happens So we can't lock you because you have veil, but we can lock you so That is an option That is an option. I think We may go that route. We may lock. Oh, you don't have any damaged cards. We actually can't lock right now. Oh Hold on Hold on That doesn't work um, all right, well, in that case, in that case, we might Sheila you for three damage and also bleed you with Unseen Elder. Hmm. That does leave these guys all unaddressed, which makes me a little concerned. They do have a lot of engines, a lot of cards that gain value over time. A matter of what do we prioritize. You're hard to shut down because you have the Veil. I think we want to try to hit you so we can get you damaged because everything else is highly boosted or shielded. So we do this. And that makes it easier to get the lock Interesting. on our next turn. Could have converted. I think we'll convert Sheila on our next turn. Once she uses her ability. That will get boosted and can move cards, which would have been. Would have been. Oh no, it's still it's still a threat. Yeah. No, that still destroys cards. Um Getting rid of the wing did not did not change that. So you need to go away. We need to destroy you. You do not avail. That's interesting. You have Veil in multiplayer Gwent, you do not have Veil in Rogue Mage. So in that case. We could. Great Oak. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six damage is enough to destroy you. It's enough to destroy you as well. The bleed is going to continue to weaken you, so maybe we don't rush to take out this wing just yet. You're more urgent. You are more urgent. But we could lock you now. Hmm. Or damage by two... Leader ability destroys you, or damage by three, gets you down to two. Leader ability destroys you, and then we can get something like a great sword on the board, which then has a little more time to power up, which would be kind of nice. I think we do that. Yeah. Damage you there. Destroy you. To prevent them from destroying any of our frozen cards. And then now that you have used your ability, you're just a three power card that's frozen and not doing anything else, so we might as well convert you and good. Two higher base power, and every time they play a card, it'll get damaged by one. So that will certainly more quickly support the Greatsword, and I'm thinking we're gonna use Drog. 
on this row once you get up to your maximum power is the plan. Yeah, I'm worried that... Oh, that's going to move the card as well. And they... Wait, how are they creating... Whenever a freezing unit is destroyed, you spawn in um, one of the frozen adventurers that this can consume. So yeah, they still have a fair number of synergies here. A fair number of synergies. So we need to be careful. We need to be careful. We are also starting to run a little bit low on the energy. So uh, also, the earlier we lock stuff, the better. <laughs> you know, cards that gain value over time, we lock them early so that they don't get big. So if we are going to lock you, we should lock you very soon. And then maybe what we go for here. I'd love if we got a Morkfrog for, through Portal to damage you a bunch. We could convert you, but it's not like the Revenants are going to have anything to destroy immediately anyway, so that's not a huge priority just yet. So I think we just, especially since they're about to freeze in their next turn, let's go Jenga. They have a damage card, so we can lock you. So that's no longer generating additional value. And I think this might be the turn that we deliberately do not use any leader ability stuffs, any energy. Damage by one. Damage by two. If you have the highest unit on the board, you actually do right now. Okay. So now... Three power on the right wing. Thunder gets rid of it. Or... We convert. And the Revenants collectively would have enough damage to destroy you on our next turn. That's cheaper, energy-wise, of course. 29, with four turns left. That means... That'd be 24 if we did portal every turn. So we'd still have a little bit of energy to spare. We might draw into one more card. Probably will draw into one more card. So if we have one, two, three, four, five turns, then, okay. Yeah. Hmm. I think we do go for it here. Shut this off. Draw cards, Proto Flutter, which, hmm, I thought we were guaranteed to get this before, but maybe we needed one more card. Oh, right, we were assuming we were going to destroy both wings. Okay, so now, and we don't have a ton of bleed stacked up on anybody, so there's not an amazing option for Proto Flutter to, to get boosts, but Great Oak gives us more removal, if we'd like, and at this point, you... We'll generate two points or deal two damage every turn. You're still a threat. You're no longer a threat. You're no longer a threat now that you're locked. You are combining with you to be dangerous. You're the easiest to address. You're almost low enough that we could destroy you with just thunders. What if... What if we allow you to hit us once on their next turn? We weaken you with... Lead on Proto Flutter, it means we're not going to get the biggest Proto Flutter in the world, but it, we're missing out of one extra point of boost by not targeting this Frenzied Dao. Do that to drop you down to three, so then we remove you with Thunder on our next turn, and we can still get more ambitious with the removal on Great Oak. Possibly. Running out of time to set up the Drog, though. Hmm. Tell you what. Thunder, next turn, drop you down to a one, destroy you, and take it from there. I think. I think. We could convert something. A frozen card, but this is still generating value. These aren't, but they're seven base power. It's unlikely we get something higher power than that, so I'm hesitant to go that route. Okay. Frost means more damage, but now we do Thunder. Get rid of you, because you are an engine. 
by weakening and then destroying you and spawning in a revenant in the process. So now next turn we could thunder again on you and get another revenant. That'd be nice. But now we can hmm. Raid Oak. One, two, three, four, five, six damage. You're the only engine remaining. But it's not enough to destroy you. I think we wait on the Great Oak then. And we do something like Drummond Berserker and see where this damage happens to go with. Yeah, yeah, we see where that goes, I think. And played a little bit by ear. We want to set up this death blow, but more important actually is that we set up Gregoire. And that's the easiest way to do it right now, would be on this Frenzied Dow. Unless if that happens. <laughs> okay, on after three turns, beginning of your turn, move a random enemy unit to the other row four times. Uh oh. Wait, what? Increase this number by three for each wing you control. Okay, they don't control any more wings, but uh, that's a problem. That's a pretty big problem. That means that uh, a whole lot of these cards are going to, uh, well, are going to get moved and probably destroyed. So we should start flipping some things with the Tears of Dragon. So you, I think when you get transformed, you might lose the, the freezing. So that's fine. You're still generating value. You're not. You're one less points, but I think we probably look to convert you. No additional value, but at least you're not a card that's going to get destroyed. Then... Raid Oak at this point, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage we can do. And that is enough to weaken you down to a one, which could be enough. Could be enough to get the Gregoire Death Blow. So I think what we do here... I think we do go Great Oak on you. Double Revenant here to remove you means we're missing out on one damage from bleed, but we'll live. The other thing we'd like would actually be if we can, uh, if we can totally fill a row that it might prevent them from moving cards in this row into that row, but if they move here first, then that's not gonna matter. So, uh, you know, it's uh, probably not gonna be a factor after all, but let us Great Oak, I think. Hold on, was that the right side to do it? The enter unit by the number of cards to the left. Yes, that was the correct side. You do that. We could take the guaranteed death blow here. In fact, maybe we'll do that. We'll do it on you because you might get destroyed. And then what we do is if you get hit if you hit this that's unfortunate you're gonna die to the bleed if you don't then we can either go death blow here or death blow here let's go leader ability portal now and this time we will try to flood our melee row if possible would love a more card we did not get one damage a unit by four or damage four enemy units by one Ugh. Not a huge factor. Obviously, Panther is not great. Move two enemy units to the other row and give them two bleeding. Increase the bleeding duration for each Jason allied unit. And we can make that happen for sure. That is. Tech. This is what? Eight points? This is. Technically a little bit more than that. Not a lot of time for this to take effect. But we can go. Do that and well, you can't get bled because you have Veil. I am now realizing, and this is overkill, especially because we're likely to destroy you anyway on your next turn. Do we have a reason why we want to move you? Uh, not necessarily, I don't think. Right, it's not even going to remove the shield or anything like that, no. I guess we're moving you. I've already played Proto Flutter as well, right? So, no, we've not. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. It does set up Proto Flutter, though. It does set up Proto Flutter, though. Okay, so this is going to be scary once this triggers. That did get rid of the freeze, uh, but I hate that. I do hate that, though. I did not see what it did other than 
apply three freeze and damage them by three. Yeah, that uh, that did shut down all the revenants that still had order abilities, which does stink. This row is full, which means these cannot get moved into that row, which is nice. But again, if they move these guys first, then suddenly they can do all the, the movement they'd like. So we do have a one powered card, which I think that means we are going Gregoire here. Because that's pretty huge. And then I think we have enough energy here, right? To go portal both times, and that is presumably going to be our best option. Morkfarg is still probably the best card, and there he is. That's what we've been waiting for, because you play him, and you hit this until it's damaged. And that's a whole lot of damage. All right, I was going to say, this is worth a whole lot, so although we have a big lead here, I'm still a little concerned. I don't like that. Don't like the freeze on you. But fortunately... You're staying alive. This will consume you on their next turn. But we can convert some stuff here if we'd like. You're ruptured. We lose the rupture if we convert you. I think we do as well. We lose all statuses, right? Because this would destroy you. The rupture. So it damages based on base power. So I think that makes you the obvious conversion target. That's going to destroy this. So that saved one unit, but will destroy another. So that did backfire in a tremendously worst possible way it could have done. But uh, I mean, again, we saw Villain Treadmill at the very beginning from a portal and the uh, game really wants to ruin our day with it. But I think we're still going to be able to make this work because if we Proto Flutter here, we can get a bigger boost on you. And we're not going to have time to remove this so that we'll be able to eat it we won't have enough damage to destroy you with thunder we could try a portal and see what we get but it's unlikely to work if we hadn't used Morkvark on our previous turn this probably still would have been might have still been the highest guards so this villain threaten roof might have destroyed you rather than Gregoire but alas maybe that's our you know our karma for getting a lucky Morkvark now we get an unlucky villain threaten roof so it all balances out at the end of the day we'll do this get a boost and then we we'll use a portal and we'll see what we get here. Not necessarily sure there's anything in particular that would be useful for us. Siana, if we had used her before we just played, the Proto Flutter could have doubled down on the Proto Flutter's boost, but uh, alas, not so here. Uncreate Warcryer is a little late for that, so it's probably to reveal damage enemy units on both ends by two, or damage all enemy units in a row by one. We don't have a lot of units left, but they are all in the same row. Um. Ooh. Yeah, I guess the combination of the two damage here plus a thunder would have been enough to remove you, but we can't use the thunder on this turn anyway, so it's not really a factor. Uh, we uh, we could play you in either row, but I don't remember if it's technically going to try to hit you at the end of the row. Well, you have a shield, so it's not going to matter anyway. So it, it's two damage either way, right? I like the way you die, or tell you what, we do this. Fill this row entirely is better, just because it's harder for them to do the movement. So we might as well go that route. We have a huge lead, so we should be fine, but they are able to eat this, which will give them six points. And if they move this Gregoire in particular, and that's going to give them... Or actually, we're going to... Oh, no, we won't have time to destroy Gregoire, because this takes two turns anyway. Whoo, thank goodness. But they could move him and therefore destroy him, potentially. So we shall see. We shall see. Is it enough? We're about to find out. Ulf Hedin should be on you. But we will hold on for the win. So that means we have won on our second attempt with Savage Fury. We won with Dogger, and now we have won with Unseen Elder as well. And we are now on a three-game win streak, so that's pretty cool. Two Savage Fury deck victories. I like how it keeps track for your specific archetypes as well. Cool stuff. Let us continue. We unlock several things here. What the heck? Okay, hold on. I want to take a look at some of this stuff. So... I think we just unlocked Edict. Destroy a damaged unit, which would be amazing, on a Savage Fury deck, such as this one, where you have Unseen Elder just pokes enemies with one damage bleed here and there, and use Edict. Destroy it. 
as long as it doesn't have other sources of boost. So that could be really useful in Savage Fury decks. Shawnee is what looks to be a key card. Play unit from your graveyard. Beat an elite enemy to evolve. Cooldown three. I think this is for the, uh, the one that we've not yet played. The Swarmy one, which I'm blanking out on the name of at the moment. Treasure card, Muta Generator. Passive, so it just starts on the board and stays there. At the start of your turn, set the power of all units in your hand randomly from 1 to 13. What? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a risky one. But if you have a bunch of low base power cards, then maybe that's not a terrible gamble to take. But if you have a bunch of high base power cards, then likely to backfire. Then reinforcements. Lady of the Lake. Give an allied unit a shield and has a shield. Okay. Istrid. Zeal, draw up to one card, then shuffle the same number of cards back into your deck. Whenever you draw a unit, you boost that by one. If it's not a unit, boost self by one instead. At the end of your turn, increase the number of cards drawn by one. So it's a consistency tool. It improves your hand, or at least gives you the chance to improve your hand. And can boost itself a little bit, or boost the cards you draw into a little bit. Banard Student, damage an enemy unit by one at the end of your turn, increase the value by one. So, has one big burst of damage. The longer you wait to do it, the more powerful it becomes. That's presumably something you might want for Savage Fury. Masterful Thunder caught my attention here. It's a more expensive version, I assume, and a more powerful version of Thunder. Damage an enemy unit by a random amount between 4 and 8. So it's guaranteed to be at least 1 damage more than the base Thunder, but it costs twice as much. It could be as much as 8 damage, which is almost 3 times the power of the base Thunder. If you get the Deathblow, damage adjacent units by the excess damage. Ooh. Obviously expensive. A little bit more up to RNG, but uh, when it works, it could be great. Mel, you seen? I love this card. I love this card. This is, along with Dogger, one of my favorites. Veil, Order, Spawn, Rain on an enemy row for two turns, cooldown two. Rain, of course, weather effect that deals a little bit of damage uh, every turn. So, defeat a lead enemy to evolve, it is a key card. I am intrigued to try that out. More treasure cards. Horn of Plenty. Starts on the board. It's a passive. Stays there whenever an allied unit is boosted. Give it one vitality. Oh, it's very much a bulwark treasure that you're looking for. Because it basically is just the more you boost, the more powerful this becomes. It could add up, add up to a whole lot. And, and in particular, I'd think, well, both Fisigoda and in, what, an upgraded Raynard... So that he, I think the upgraded version boosts all allied units when you play him, right? So that would be also really helpful as well. And um, we've not yet gotten here. Okay, that one we're still in progress for. Gotcha. So there we go. Another successful run with Savage Fury and three in a row now. So that feels good. And I believe that was our third mutagen here. And so we have now fully stocked our station. Just shall we see what happens if we experiment? Why not? What could possibly go wrong? It's not like this was a huge, huge setback that backfired on us tremendously last time we did it. Right! During an excursion north, Alzor, cursed by an insatiable curiosity, found himself pursuing the mystery behind a series of suspicious deaths. Thanks to the mage's incredible knack for deductive reasoning, he was able to identify the culprit a courtesan, with a grudge against men and a penchant for poison. The disillusioned woman had most wickedly murdered dozens of clients using a concoction of rare herbs, her chosen toxins leaving each victim writhing in mortal agony as their insides slowly melted away. Ever the opportunist, Alzur offered the woman a choice. She could face the wrath of the townsfolk she'd wronged, a death sentence for sure, or she could come with the mage, take her chances with his experiment, and perhaps live to see another day. She chose the latter. Of course, the mage hoped she would survive the procedure, but if her life was to be forfeited, he surmised, then perhaps she could find redemption in her sacrifice. After all, she had caused much suffering with her poisons. It seemed only fitting that she should endure Alzor's concoctions in an effort to help save countless lives. Yet this particular experiment yielded results that confounded the mage. 
the mutations meant to reshape the body did not progress, the entire process resembling a subtle poison. She did not squirm. She did not struggle. She did not suffer in any tangible way. The courtesan simply closed her eyes, and then she died. This fruitless attempt with the courtesan ingrained in the mage a prejudice that he would never shake. And from that day onward, of the many subjects exposed to his experiments, only a handful would be female. Okay, kind of an odd takeaway from that, but okay. So our experiments continue and, uh, you know, still not really any more success in that regard. But we have completed that run successfully. And do we have new potions or other things to bear in mind here? Don't think we do. Yeah, we've, we've seen these before. I think we've seen all these before. And alas, at this point, we started to unlock a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. To the point where we may be looking to, uh, I mean, we could, of course, mix things up a little bit with, uh, we now have, yes, a Glace we suspected was a key card for the Bulwark deck. We've not yet tried using her, but we've now done two runs with Savage Fury, one with Dogger, one with Unseen Elder. Both were successful there. We've won a run with Raynard and won a run with Visigoda. So now I think rather than going for the third key card of the types of decks we've already used, we're probably looking at going for the Hive Mind deck here, which would either be Detloff, Higher Vampire as our key card. This is presumably the one that you would start with, or Shawnee, the one that we just recently unlocked. So that is probably next on our agenda, and we'll take a closer look at what exactly we have in this deck once we do that. I won't, won't spoil this too much for myself just yet, but another success, successful run. That's always good to see. We're building up some momentum here, and I was somewhat concerned when we were using the Unseen Elder. I thought that maybe Dogger... Admittedly, I like Dogger more than I like Unseen Elder, so maybe it was just my, my own personal bias shining through, but I thought that maybe we would not have been as successful with Unseen Elder as we were going to be with Dogger, but alas, we made it work either way. So uh, with that being said, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you next time.